Hello, I'm Kate Eden and this is Laurel Eden from Eden Consultancy Services. Today we're going to talk about obesity, being overweight and having the goal of losing weight. Now you've been in practice for quite a long time and you do specialise in clients who have obesity concerns or who have experienced stomach banding and then are coming to you with um, further problems. So. so how do you feel when a client comes to you with the goal of losing weight? Well, I generally take a deep breath. <laughs> that's probably the first thing I do because almost certainly that's going to be their primary goal as the emotional distress and the habits that have been formed for many, many years, the client usually doesn't want to attempt to. They just want to lose weight. And so you find often that an underlying cause of weight gain is actually a low self-esteem. Oh, certainly. And I think that's probably enhanced by our by our culture as well. So there's quite a lot of shame associated with being overweight and even with eating, isn't there? Deep shame. Deep shame and continual loss of self-esteem. And why is that? Is that just because our society is just so focused on, on being thin? I, I don't think that's the whole of the, of the issue. I certainly think it's part of it. Um, and it probably would be easier to change your habits if society wasn't focused that way. And of course, there's a degree of self harm in this as well. And as you know, I'm very clear how often we self harm in all sorts of emotional ways. Uh, we can self harm, um, for example, knowing that we're overweight, committing to a diet, and then having a sneaky chocolate or having something good. And there's often a dopamine hit associated with that, isn't there? Yes, there's an instant dopamine hit, and we're addicted to that. You know, we are addicted to a dopamine hit. And the fact that it doesn't last very long and has to be reproduced, uh, which then leads to binge eating because it's just continual dopamine and then self-loathing. You know. And now the goal of losing weight. Um, a lot of people, we, we, we get told stories about people who have lost a large amount of weight and it's a big success story. Um, how, how, how does that generally go for them? Well, it's not true. You know, basically when that information comes across, they'll never do is it five years down the track. It's usually within six months that that, that information is coming through. And we know that probably more than 95% of people who lose weight very quickly put it on again. But everybody believes that they're going to be the 5% or the 4% that sort of maintains that weight. I remember some um, quite alarming information that you told me uh, after an obesity conference about fat cells and that fat cells basically never go away. So what happens is um, the fat cells swell up with the fat and then when they can't grow anymore, they reproduce and make another fat cell. And when you lose weight, the fat comes out of the cells, but the cells are still sitting there kind of like a bank waiting and the body wants to fill them up again. Yeah, and it's interesting how the body really clings to the weight. It really has this habit of clinging to the weight. And in some ways, I often say to people just to keep it light. Uh, mainly we've got to deceive the body. We've got to figure out a way in which to kind of sneak up and deceive the body. I know that's a very simplistic statement, but sometimes it helps because it puts a bit of humour into the whole very, very uncomfortable process. How do you find when people get stomach banding, they lose a lot of weight quite rapidly because, of course, they just can't eat that same amount of food? Do they just end up being happy, happily ever after? Occasionally, but generally that person has changed their behaviour in other ways. And I've actually had clients that have been quite, taken six months to really think about the stomach banding operation and have changed their behaviour, sort of, looked at things, other things that would give them a, a dopamine hit, uh, developed hobbies and things like that. And some of them have actually changed their minds at the last minute and decided not to have the stomach pain because they've actually changed their behaviour. But those people who've still got the underlying emotional stuff, still got the self-esteem problem, still, still got the shame uh, entrenched, they will usually conspire to sort of defeat the stomach pain in the and the example I can give is of a client who used to drink cupfuls of cream. Her stomach couldn't hold any large amounts of food, uh, so she'd drink a cupful of cream and managed to put on weight. I've seen people. 
I've seen people throw up, you know, spend a lot of time throwing up because that's what you do when your stomach goes in, uh, in order to try for that dimension and they haven't changed the behaviour and very often they will go on to do it, put on most of the weight that they've lost. So what advice would you give to people out there who, who are not happy with their weight, uh, who, who would like to lose weight? The advice that I know I should give, but sometimes it's too much for people to take on board, is that this is a long process. You know, that we actually need six to 12 months to really look at what you want to be and how you can achieve that and how to change your behaviour. Uh, we don't easily change our behaviour. We do not easily change our habits. So becoming aware of the habit, you know, admitting to the overall admitting to the dopamine you know, addiction, you know, to, to, to sort of admit that you're an addict is extremely hard, as we know from people who have actually been addicted to drugs or alcohol. Mm. That admission that you're an addict is extremely difficult to do. And obese people don't see that as an addiction. They're quite critical of drug and alcohol, but they don't see the other forms of addiction that we can have, which is just as lethal. And I guess the goal that you would suggest that they might want to try to adopt is one of being happy and well, because if they're working towards general health and well-being and happiness, they're probably more likely to start to resolve some of those self-esteem and underlying emotional uh, issues, and they may become happy and well without even losing any weight at all. And, and straight off, you have to define what happiness is for an individual. It's a very loose term. So in other words, what would you like to do? What would you like to be? How would you like to see yourself as a person? You know, um, and in order to achieve that, what do you need to do? So defining what happiness is. A lot of people look at the blank leaf uh, and don't really know what happiness means for them. I think that part of the goal of losing weight, and of course, especially for women, is about looking better and being more attractive. And yet I've always found that people who are really happy and full of life do actually shine with an inner beauty, whether they're outwardly beautiful or attractive at all. And there's nearly always confidence that goes along with that, isn't there? You know, the inner beauty is confidence. Confidence and a sense of joy. I walk on this planet in a confident way. And that's the goal that we'd like to work towards.